Hey guys, welcome back to Track Yards. He's Commander Cocking. He's Captain Foley. And we're talking about Lower Decks today, episode nine. Uh, trusted sources. Spoilers, everybody. So join our. If you want more detailed breakdown and review, check out our live later today at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And they have given us some Track Yards goodness in this week, so check out our normal schedule of events for good breakdowns. We've not filmed it yet, but. I know what's coming, Stuart, and you know you know what will be coming. I'm sure we'll have fun, so tune in for that. But Stuart then, penultimate, what do you think? I was expecting it not to be so great, but uh, again, the end saves it, I think. Um, I do like that it, they return to like the symbiosis episode of TNG, like season one, uh, to those planets, because we, we made the comment when we reviewed that, and then Picard just takes off. <laughs> leaving <laughs> leaving not David Marcus to suffer. So we got kind of resolution to that, which was great. You know, we got a reference to Landrew. We got a reference to a few other little things. And, uh, of course, we got a new ship, which is amazing. Uh, the Legitimate Texas new class, ship. Yeah. USS El Alito. And uh, looking forward to talking about that for sure. Um, got the return of uh, Petra Aberdeen, which was awesome. Although um, back very, very quick. Yeah, exactly. And I kind of like her ship, too. The one in the cell thing. That's kind of a neat ship. Um, so, so, so got some ships, got some uh, other cool stuff, and uh, really we see the change in Mariner, um, and we learn that Captain Freeman is, a, is an awful human being for just assuming things. So, hey, and Levy, Levy, the conspiracy guy is back as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff here, and we get to see a little bit of Starbase 80, see one of their shuttles, and the they actually have the old combat on, like the TNG you know seven seasons com badge and so that's kind of neat by samuel yeah yeah so yeah there's a lot to break down here and it was a fun episode i really did i really did enjoy this one so yeah how about you i liked it it's hard not to like lower decks it feels very much like a part one that part two will make it or break it a bit more with, with there's a lot of setups here that the payoffs will help to double down or, or not quite whatever it, it does instantly change the whole feel of the season, which I said last week didn't really have a, a season-wide arc feel. Really, it was very episodic with these tiny little evolutions. But this episode had all of the ties from the season all in one all of a sudden. It was extremely packed with this season's themes. You have Mixamo being overly in charge of no one doing nothing. So, like, that was a payoff. You had all the gen stuff, that's a payoff. You had the candle stuff, that's a payoff. You, you had the Freeman stuff to pay off, you had Mariner stuff to pay off, you had, you know, it, a lot of that stuff suddenly was crammed into one episode, which kind of felt like it should have been more stretched out. You know, the, the Breen stuff would have been great to have them been set up at all, in any way, because that was great. Really, really fun. I forgot to mention the return of the Breen in my little son. Like, that that itself is like a yay moment, and it, it, it's not thrown in, that's the wrong way of saying it, but it, it, it feels like they kind of thrown in three episodes worth of payoffs, or potential payoffs. And now I'm hoping that next week we're getting a lot more Breen, but I kind of feel like that was just to give us an antagonist. I think structurally you're not going to continue with the Breen, even though it feels like that's a huge... But we're going to ignore... You know, it, it's... That's what I mean. The second episode is going to be very interesting to see how they frame it, because this one's interesting. Yeah, I mean, the Breen coming back was a nice surprise. I did like that. And the fact they still have their energy dampening weapon that Starfleet hasn't found a response for. Well, they're going to well, keep updating well, it every year to try and keep countering. And the, and the, and, and even if the Defiant and those ships can deal with it later on, I mean, a Cali class, it's not necessarily going to be tuned for, and, you know. So I like that. Um, what do you think but, about my, my note there about it being an episode of, of a few too oh, many yeah. payoffs and kind of... Well... You say that, but I think it was structured like very well to incorporate them all and not feel out of place. It, it all kind of came to a head in a natural way. Because it, it, cause it, let's say it, was, it was this season's payoff episode, but the, some of those things were so minimal to their episode that it feels odd to have a payoff. But it's like, oh, I remember that. I remember that from this season. Like, like the lady at the end, like we just saw her. It doesn't feel overly satisfying to bring her back. At least to me, it's like, oh, cool. You also did say that uh, Mariner wasn't going to leave Starfleet to, to team up with her, and I said it's probably going to come back, so... But but you know she's going to come back back, so it kind of feels hollow in itself. Do we, though? We don't. Well, she's in the, the Stranger Worlds crossover. Oh, yeah. Could be she was an archaeologist on a planet, and Mariner and uh, Boimler is trying to get her back. Who knows? It's like I say, we don't know Picard's going to be in Season 6, TNG. 
Uh huh. Well, we didn't know he was going to be in season three, four. Uh, it'd be the, the cutest one episode, and then he could be dead. We don't know. <laughs> so I was, I, it, it, uh, it's weird. But I liked it, and there's some really great ideas. And like I said, next part's going to change the entire vibe. It's such a part one. It's like, how could you judge Best of Both Worlds one without two? Because the ending feels like a giant paradigm shift. Because it is, in theory. But if it's resolved by the end of the next episode, it's less powerful. Unless the whole episode is maybe like a time jump. Like, you do a lot with it, but it, it's that precipice of a moment, right? What do you think about Freeman's reaction to everything and not really hearing, oh. hearing the whole situation? Uh, I, I get get it. You assume the worst from somebody like Mariner because you have a history and you know what she's like. I really didn't think that Mariner would have said anything bad. I mean, they kind of frame it so that, yeah, I told them exactly how it was and whatever. Um, so I, I was kind of like, I don't know if that's what Mariner would do. And I'm glad that it paid off that it wasn't the case. You think the reporter would have said something when she got sent off to Starbase 80? Like, why are you sending off your best officer that gave you the best review? But no, she just watches it happen. It's like, I, I was super torn on that because they played every single avenue of attack in terms of what you meant to think. For a long time, I was thinking, oh, this is obviously, obviously, this is being played like it's comical, like this is a plant. Mariner's going to do a secret mission because it's to do with the Breen at Starbase 80. Because the way they framed it was so laughable, like, like everyone's so anti her. She's like, guys, what? I did literally nothing wrong. I thought, you know, they're actively throwing her out, like, row, like one of those, like, like that. I thought that was so out of place. But that's just because they had to go through the story quickly. And then as it went on, I was like, well, but she didn't do anything wrong because she's not acting, she, she's actually so genuine. But then, as you said, she just told the truth. The truth isn't right or wrong. The fact that the record is incredibly all over the place and she just told the truth. So if she could have just told the truth, everyone's pissed at her for the repercussions of it. But she's not seeing because she's just told the truth. I didn't get. I didn't think for a second she walked in bad mouth. She just said the events. There is a line when they get to Brecca where Freeman says, "Oh, just ignore what Mariner said. She's very biased." And the reporter's like, "Oh, really?" And that makes sense because she was saying how great the ship was, how great the captain was, best captain in Starfleet. Which my mom definitely isn't. That. So she's the reverse which, bias of season one. Which really kind of is interesting because it's like, yeah, ignore the fact that she said everything's great and it's mm -hmm. the best and. Uh, because she's very biased and the reporter's like oh okay all right cool i'll ignore that i'll listen to the rest of your crew instead um so but you you might not have you might not necessarily catch that on the first go through um but it's kind of important i think in the the overall arc of the story and the, the reporter's understanding of what's going on so I, it was a nice little line i'm glad they added that in <sighs> but i didn't think she was gonna go and bad mouth her mum. she's 100 percent committed to a journey I mean, you can tell by the actor's performance how gleeful she is at the genuine piding contest. There's no malice in the subtext of the dialogue. There's no anything there. Even being thrown out of the bar, she takes it really well considering. There's obviously a breaking point, but she's really, really come a long way. And it, it's... So I... Oh, it's, I just, like I said, I assumed that, yeah, she just told the truth and the reporter span it as, were you in danger of the crew, Freeman? Because she did do weird things. I guess it's just the rest of the crew felt so comfortable to tell the truth, but because they all experienced it from their own perspective in a less focused way. Marin was the head of the spear in most scenes versus, you know, out of context, say I was a puppet and I had the pain of being a puppet and saying, well, you know, but there's shit happens. And clearly that reporter was bloody green as hell. Never seen a warp core. So this is one of our first assignments on a ship. Otherwise she would not be so excited to be on a low end ship seeing stuff for the first time. So she clearly has another context of this stuff just happens, you know, this weird sci-fi stuff. But then again, she's like, back in the Dominion War, well, you can't do both. So it's one of the, mm. Mm. yeah, one of the thing. well, she's excited to be on the Cali class because she's from, you know, wherever, I forget where she said she was from, but it's near California, uh, Arizona, or like, I forget what, anyway. But uh, yeah, the one thing that bothered me was why, why if Freeman didn't want they she even reassigned the shift to be alpha shift so that beta shift wouldn't be on why would she take the reporter strolling along that corridor at the back of the ship where all of the lower deckers are on her walk through on the way to the quarters which would be up in the saucer section like it doesn't make sense that she took her that way <laughs> so that kind of bugged me a little bit um 
like you would assume that the guest quarters would be, you know, probably the front of the saucer section, or you didn't have to walk by that corridor that faced the rear of the ship necessarily. I don't know. Story. Yes, exactly. Plot. Plot. I mean, the chance um, of them being there, I guess, is low. Relatively, they, should, they could be doing anything else anywhere else. But also, yeah, you've, you've dis disassigned them, so there's nowhere else they're going to be. If they're sleeping, you don't want to wake her up and get cranky, Mariner. It's one of the few standing sets, Stuart. They had to use it. <laughs> that, that, that recap of the, the uh, Season 1, Episode 22, Symbiosis, by um, Ransom was spot on, brilliant, got to the point, told the story, got some nice little visuals in there, and that's awesome. And the whole, oh yeah, Picard, you know, it took 10 or 14 years or whatever for us to, I love the mural. Like there's the Enterprise leaving, then there's the freak out, and then there's like the fit, you know, that was fantastic. You, you think that they made us seen that when they beamed down, because they beamed down like right in front of it. And I like the, uh, the whole project swing by idea go revisit some of these planets because there's a lot of episodes that we review were like and you just leave after that there's the one with the political uprising um you know what i mean with uh what's his name the guy that played Zephyr from cochran um james cromwell and we were like what you're just gonna leave they're gonna like maybe these rebels are gonna kill all the politicians because <laughs> so anyway i love that there's that follow-up going on and the whole project swing back is or swing by is a good idea so yeah, it, I've said I've said this personally to Mike McMahon, showrunner of Lower Decks, and Aaron Waltke, lead show, lead writer of Prodigy. It's cool we can say that. They have the power of canon in their hands. If they want to close a, a thread, they can do it. And so it's very, very satisfying to, as you say, learn what happened and in an interesting, meaningful way to both rec uh, re recognize it in the truth of the situation that we saw and then also, there's enough time has passed that anything can happen. And so to see them, you know, it's horrible, the mural, but also it shows that with enough work and, and strike, you know, doing well, you can overcome things, which is wonderful itself. And as a payoff to that, it, it is fantastic. As dark as it is, it, it comes out in a light moment. I did think for, for a few minutes, the whole episode plays a bit odd, it's slightly conspiratorial to me. So I was thinking, where's the payoff going to be? That they're actually under control of someone else, or you know, it, it seemed too too straightforward to reveal that they were fine, but that's just it was played for you know. Now the second planet, impossible to tell the framing. Was it destroyed by the Breen? Was it they did it destroy themselves years ago? So we can't judge how that planet functioned. Clearly, it was not nuclear wasted. There's um, no answers really, though. Yeah, but there are hover bike, car things, helicopters in the first shot. So there is still technology which you would think would have been utilised early in some sort of conflict or mass whatever. But they're so low in tech and that the Breen came in and did a mass wipeout. Uh, and besides, I, you know, you tend to beam into like the capital city. So does not even if that city is abandoned, doesn't speak to Joe Farmer 6,000 miles left. So we, we can't really say. It's unlikely that they didn't that when they walked into orbit, they didn't say, Captain, there's only three life signs on the planet. There's going to be trillions and you know, billions of people on the planet, otherwise they would notice that going in and say, I think the planet's screwed. So it's clearly the planet's fine, just that one city was destroyed by the Breen, which is a story in itself. But I mean, that's what I took from that. Now I've sort of debated it, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it. What do you think? Didn't think about that, honestly. I just I was sad that the one Breacon, or the planet was Breca, so uh, I don't know what they would call it. She got disintegrated in front of ransom like what the hell um yeah i don't think the society would have necessarily fallen apart they were the worst off in the situation i think because of the financial and uh whatever there, there was a whole thing about that in, in symbiosis it didn't look like they were trying to destroy themselves like you said you saw the the helicopter vehicles and stuff and i'm like oh that's cool if you're going to attack a planet yeah it makes sense to go to the capital and it's also if you're going to visit from starfleet same thing so um, I never really considered that, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's no evidence of Breen presence orbiting the planet, I guess. And uh, yeah, you would think you would have, run, would have run scans looking for population density and stuff as you're approaching the planet. Because so. you, you'd be forgiven to not notice, you know, 80,000 people are missing in one city if there's 8 billion people on the planet. Yeah, they didn't scan the city for life science. Okay, but the planet for sure. So... Uh, but then the Breen, great introduction. They were genuinely, not frightening, but intimidating, 
powerful feeling. I mean, they, they, I mean, Cali's, again, not a good ship in terms of power or defense ability, but it's a good battle. They knock it out really quick. They Star Trek 6 it with a, a, a th and through the entire hull. You know, that one of the few times they get to say, you know, damaged all decks. Well, that's incorrect because there's more decks than the saucer, but like that's that's the that's the shot, you know, straight through. It's funny because they the, the Cerritos launches a full spread of torpedoes, which the brain shoot out of the sky. Proof that there are like point defense phasers that First can time take we've out seen that, I think. incoming projectile. Well, usually you think of point defense phase, like weapons taking out like missiles or drones, but no, to take out photon torpedoes. Damn, that's pretty impressive. And we've you know, a lot of games like Starfleet Battles and stuff do have that kind of thing. You can, but you can't shoot at a direct fire weapon like a plasma, like a photon torpedo. You can shoot at plasma torpedoes. So it's just, it's interesting to see that and have that be kind of canonized now that uh, photon torpedoes can be shot out of, the, out of the sky. But the great caveat is that the Breen are such a unique race. There's so little known that I buy, I wouldn't buy Klingons or Romulans to do this. Not, not really. But these guys, they designed a weapon that entirely disabled any Federation Starship, Romulan, or Klingon. That's o OP power, right? That's already top level. This, for me, is another thing they've developed at Super Specialist. I buy it. Just, just, it's so weird and Specialist. Although the way they framed the torpedoes was so TOS um, in the way they did full spread. But it kind of felt like it was slow torpedoes, like they, they were lower lower grade it wasn't Only a cali class ship so. exactly it wasn't presented to me like like last week with the with the, with the sovereign going you know heavy hitting so i was like okay these weak torpedoes could be taken out they're slower whatever but yeah really good moment i mean it, it, there was although i don't know if you would agree with this but certainly it was the third season in a row our ship's been attacked and boarded vibe um, at least similar, and then to, to be rescued. I'm shocked that they did that for a third season in a row, the Federation ships rescuing. It then got undone very quickly, which I guess makes it better, but I was like, oh, we're doing this again, again, again. What did you think? So it was, it, it, it was... Oh, as soon as they said it, I think it's Starfleet, I'm like, oh, really? And then the green ship gets destroyed, and I'm like, what ship is this? Is it Sovereign class? What is this? Um, I was kind of surprised that it happened again. Uh, like, the poor Cerritos gets the crap kicked out of it all the time. But Captain or Admiral um, Buen Amigo, um, it's it's. How did he know to send this ship? How did they know to send the ship and to that the Breen might be there? Like it just seemed odd timing, uh, considering everything that was going on. I I don't know how I feel about the whole situation. Well, like I said, uh, Bruce, the whole thing feels a bit like a plan, like a conspiracy. There's a little twinge of that in the entire episode. It's like oh, it might okay, be. that might be the case. But did it feel a little bit, a little bit creatively not bankrupt, but lower end? Have another battle, destroyed, damaged ship come to rescue for a third time? Uh, well, I didn't really think about it like in that regard until you just said that. And, like wearing uh, thin, I should say. That's a bit of phrasing. Uh, I don't think it's weird. I still love hearing the like Starfleet's coming in and save the day kind of thing. I like that, but yeah, it is getting to be a little bit of a trope. Like, I still liked it, but it didn't have the impact of the other two times. And that's a sign of it's not maybe move on to a different style. I was I was, a sh I was certain for a second, because I obviously can't predict a random AI controlled ship. Like that's, or, you know, that's a whole new thing. I was expecting Mariner took the, you know, ship from Starbase 80. She instantly turned around and came yeah, that's in. That's what I thought. Like she worked out a mystery because she was she wanted to do whatever and it's like a really cool like uh, new orleans like a super old galaxy era ship it's on like a stargazer bridge and it's a really ship mismatch and all the l cars are like t ratha khan with like a really really you know crummy mismatch of things she's now in a like a tng era uniform like it's all odd but that wouldn't have killed destroyed a breen ship with like one hit that was a pretty impressive true 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 but then i wasn't expecting the battle to be that way obviously i thought something else was going to happen you know to end on a cliffhanger rather than just we win next. What did you think about the boarding implement that the Breen used, like cutting through the, yeah. the window? That was kind of neat. I love the Temerian. I mean, the, the, there's only three of them, so they should have had more guards, but he has his phaser and his knife. Lovely touch. Stupid, lovely touch. Um, and we and heard that, him speaking English. He wasn't just stuck with the Temerian um, uh, speaking structure, so I like that. He has lived in the cave once, but not right now. Um, and yeah, that, that Breen guy, that shot of the Breen with the rifle pointed, waiting to blow through, was very intimidating. They did a really good job with the Breen. I, I, I really hope they'll be in part two, but given how they sort of threw away the Titan as a concept, 
I don't think they're going to have it. I think that was just, who do we pick? Well, we could pick anybody. Yeah, Breen. Cool. That's my, that's my gut, because we're going to move past the story. Um, although I want to know what happened to the planet now, but that's not important in the grand scheme. Hmm. So yeah, like I said at the start, good episode. Part two will entirely change part one's equality, I think. Because this is meant, and, it, and they've said, and we, we were pitched this in our chat chat with them, you know, season three is going to end big again. I don't see how it's going to end big again, you know? Like, where are we going to take this? So I'm interested, I'm really interested, but there's the, there's not the framework so much to lead into an epic part two, so I don't know what to think, because it's going to be interesting. It will be interesting, so I'm looking forward to next week, which is the season finale as well. It's also the first day for Prodigy's second half of season two starting, same day, so double, dip, double hey. busy that day, but that's okay. Um... Anyway, as I said earlier, guys, subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you're notified so you don't miss, like, later today, we have our live breakdown and full review where we look at this episode scene by scene and really kind of break it down and talk about it. So if you want to join us for that and give us your thoughts, please do. We really appreciate that. Hit that like button and, uh, yeah, be part of our community. We really love you guys. So, Like, one distinct way is join our lives to say hi during any of our many events that we do in the week, either the big Lodex or probably then review lives, or the in-between ones doing random topics and reviews and TNG reviews occasionally. Come check out, and of course, all of our edited reviews, or breakdowns, I should say. We go deep, we do renders, we do comparisons, it's all there, ready for you to enjoy. So go click, super thanks, if you'd like. It's like a super chat, but super thanks. Patreon, paper, join the channel, all the great ways, and just keep tuning in. And don't forget, on the weekend, there will be the uh, Texas class video, so don't miss that. So until next time, he is Commander Cockney. He's got him 30. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.